Fish. I'm the owner of uh, Rue Pigalle and uh, I'm a craft insider and today I'm in Wiltshire in England. Normally I'm based in Toronto and I am in the studio of bookbinder Kate Holland who is here and who is going to be my guest today. So um, we are in, uh, we just arrived today in Wiltshire. We're going to be here for about uh, four days uh, hopping from studio to workshop to uh, gallery and uh, all sorts of uh, really great events and we started actually with a book binding workshop that uh, Kate uh, took us through we're not quite finished our book um, mine is certainly not finished but I can show you uh, my cover this is um, there will be pages in there <laughs> eventually but um, this is what we've been doing and uh, Kate will be leading a live workshop on Zoom for us in December mm -hmm. and January. So this is a really nice introduction. We will take you through the studio just in a moment, but maybe we're going to start with Kate. Mm -hmm. Hello. How long have you been a bookbinder? Um, nearly 25 years now. It's, um, I, uh, my son is 23 and I started just before. Just before was born. born. Yeah. Okay. I, I did a year of bookbinding and then I fell pregnant. And so I always know I love that bookbinding. <laughs> but it's quite nice because your studio is actually near your home. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little, uh, a nice little two room studio, very spacious, very airy. It's an old cow um, shed. It's an old cow shed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, because we are in the middle of nowhere here. I have to tell you, the village uh, is how many people in the village? It's actually the biggest village in Britain, but it's the most spaced out. It's not the most people, right. but it's the most spaced out. Um, and it has uh, also the most amount of footpaths because it's an old uh, wool trading place. So people would raise sheep and dye them here, and then they'd walk between all the different houses. Right. So, but it's, and we're very close to Froome, which is a market town. Yeah. Full of artisans and craftspeople, and mm -hmm. yeah. it's the hotbed of, uh, of craft yeah, yeah. So bookbinding, um, I don't think is a dying art. I think it's maybe something that people don't always understand um, and don't always have an appreciation for. Uh, but um, we're still using books. And in this moment and period of confinement, I think everybody is reading more and more, even though we're spending more time on screens. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are reading more. So without bookbinding, there's no book. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Absolutely. When did it start? Bookbinding, it's so, I mean, we're going back to Egyptian times, we're looking at sort of papyrus scrolls and Chinese, ancient China. They were making uh, printing on paper. But the first codex, which is the sort of Western form of bookbinding, was. Um, it was it basically developed in order to um, promote the Bible. So we're looking at very, very early AD, um, Roman times. But they, they were joining pages together. They would have been parchment, not paper. Paper hadn't been invented. Um, and the monasteries would have, you know, the scribes. So the would parchment written, would be um, animal hide? Animal hide, yeah. Yeah, it's a calf skin that's treated in a specific way so that they, they uh, scrape all the hair off. And then it's very, very strong. I have a piece here. Oh, great. Yes, let's um, have a look. It's, um, it's been chewed by the puppy. <laughs> it's very strong. You can see it's strong. And this is, uh, so this is a calf skin and it's treated with a, a chemical and the hair is taken off. So this is a cow and this is where the dark patches would have been on the cow, and this is where the light patches are on the cow. Oh, right. So so this you, is what you mean is the colour of the, uh, the, the height, skin, the skin, the skin, the fur. Yeah, underneath the fur. Underneath the fur, yeah. Okay. And so they would, uh, scribes would write uh, on this using um, you know, quills, um, beautiful gold illumination, and then those pages would be sewn together in a binding, and that's the earliest codex. So, um, we just did a little bit of sewing of our paper and I found it that to pierce through the few pages that 
we were we are busy binding together was quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. But to pierce through that, which is really sturdy and strong, it's, strong. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a really manual and uh, uh, books that have been made from parchment are still in existence and in, in not perfect condition, but considering they're six, seven hundred years old, or no, more than that, thousand, two thousand years old, right. Right. They're, they're still functioning and in existence, whereas if you look at books that were made 50 years ago, 100 years ago, they're already falling apart, just the, the, the way that, um, I'm just going to pierce this. Yeah, there's a lot of strength that is applied to piercing this, to be able to put the needle and the... Uh, but it doesn't tear. No. It doesn't, you know, it behaves as a, as right. a brilliant material. Yeah. yeah, oh, amazing. So it started on parchment. Mm -hmm. um, where, where are these books kept? Are they... I mean, do we, can we go to certain libraries to, to see these books or? Yeah, no, there's, um, so I only know British, where the British ones are, right. um, but there's uh, certainly the British Library or the Bodleian Library, or there's some in various, I know Hereford Cathedral, for instance, has a chained library because books were so expensive and rare, you didn't want people stealing them. So they would actually be physically chained to the bookshelves and people could then, you know, take them down, look at them in situ and then, Right. Um, and they're, they're big. They're not something you can just put in your pocket and, and walk away. It's not an easy So they would have a ring through the book or mm -hmm. through the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And we can still see them chained? Yeah. And as well. You can go to Sir Humphrey's Library at the Bodleian or um, and there's a chained library at Hereford Cathedral. Um, right. Those are the two that I know of, but I'm sure there are others. But right. yeah, it's and who used these books? So they were, you say, the Bible? and They're mainly ec ecclesiastical, so they're for the churches uh, and they would be, so you have giant, um, I'm saying off the floor, this high books with all the music for the choir. So, you know, you obviously have only, not everyone has a piece of paper, they have one big book so they can all see it from far enough away. But so you, get, you, you sometimes you find these big sheets of, of music that calligraphy and all, they're beautiful. Mm. Um, and when did it start moving from parchment to paper? So paper was um, invented or, by was the Chinese. There anything, was there anything in between? Mm, there's papyrus, which is happening in Egypt. Um, paper was invented by the Chinese in the, oh, I should be honest, there was okay. in the thousands, a long time ago anyway. They also invented uh, woodblock uh, printing. So they invented a way so you'd have the Chinese characters are written on a, a block of wood that is then carved out and inked up so that when you pr press the paper onto the uh, raised letters, it comes off and you can print multiple copies. So this is uh, before everyone was writing everything by hand. You can imagine it takes a long time. And then so the Chinese discovered woodblock printing and then it came to Gutenberg in the 1500s, yeah. Um, and he invented movable type. So this was a uh, lead type, which you could place in the correct spot and then and lock it together and ink it up. And then, then you can make multiple books and suddenly books go from being their hundreds to their thousands. Still right. not lots, but... Right. And then the book binding then was a separate um, uh, trade, I mm -hmm. guess, guild yeah. from the scribe and from them who made the... Yeah. And how did they organise? How, how is the book binding community organised? Do you have a guild? There are traditionally, there's, guild, there's, guild, there's not a guild of bookbinders, there's a guild of leather sellers and a guild of stationers. There probably has been a guild of bookbinders at some point, but it doesn't exist now. Um, in Britain, we have two organisations. One is the Society of Bookbinders and one is designer bookbinders. And um, I'm a member of both, but I'm a fellow of designer bookbinders and they specialize in contemporary fine binding. So very, the highest end of the craft, but with a modern aesthetic. Right. Um, so how do we know that a, a binding is special? What are we looking for? For us people who know nothing about bookbinding, what should we, be looking at? 
or looking for? Normally, well, the traditional covering material for a fine binding is leather. So you will more often that you can, they can be covered in vellum, they can, uh, but, but leather still is even in this vegan age that we, you know, we shouldn't be, leather is a byproduct of the meat industry. So, uh, you know, it's not, the, the animal is not being slaughtered in order to use the leather. There are, there is leather that's being grown in laboratories now from mushroom spores. So oh, right. we, we can have vegan leather in time. Um, but a fine binding will have, I'm trying to think if I've got an example of a fine binding in here to show you. Um, a very old student binding. So you have to, right. I can show you the parts of the book. Yeah, let's do that. Which, um, I should say also that um, if you have questions, as always, just put them in the chat box. Um, and um, Matthew, who's behind the camera, will see it pop up and will let me know that if there's a question or not. So, uh, okay. So this is um, a student binding that I did 25 years ago. So you have, it, I have, it, my design has moved on a little bit since then, but the, the elements are the same. So a, it would be covered in leather. This is a, a, a what's called an alum toured calf skin in that it comes white and then you can dye it to any colour you want. Um, a a, a, a well-made book, it will open nice and flat like that. The, um, it will have a nice, it should open flat like that so that you can read the pages beautifully. Um, it will have been sewn by hand and you can see if I can find a centre section to show you the stitching which Isabel has just been studying today. So you can see, in, you can just about see the stitching down the centre of, of here. That's all hand sewn. Um, you'll then have hand sewn headbands. That's good. Up. These are here. That's here. Yeah, headband or end band. Um, we quite often colour the edges. So you'll see them either gilded or marbled or painted or whatever suits the book. Um, but there's a sort of a weight and a substance substance to it. You don't. It's not a paperback which just sort of flies away. You know. I mean, yeah. It, oh yeah. This one is heavy. Yes. It's just and it just sort of opens nicely and it functions mm -hmm. well and the pages. It's not all constricted. It's yeah. And you're so you're looking at so things like these uh, squares are all nice and neat and precise and. Um, so I should tell you that we just tried to cut. <laughs> so we folded pages and um, uh, then we're told to stitch them together in the middle. And I can promise you that none of the pages was square like that. <laughs> it was, it's it an takes art. Practice. It's an art. <laughs> I try and teach so that everyone comes away with a an object that they're happy with and the, yeah it's, it's it enormously satisfying to do i have to say it's been very zen um so you went you were working as an antique uh, book dealer yeah and then decided that book binding was well i wore i was an antiquarian bookseller for i think i ran the shop for eight years something like this and i think it came to the point where i was just wanted to get out of the shop a bit. And we had a whole refurbishment and restoration department. And I thought I'll go and just do a morning a week uh, bookbinding course at um, an adult education center called City Lit, which is in the City Literary Institute, which is in central London. So I did a morning a week and I was hooked from the first book, which is the same one I just taught you today. I was immediately hooked and it, you know, I came home and I was like a child coming back from nursery showing my family, look what I've made, this is amazing. And, and what is it that is so satisfying? This, I think there's something, you talk, just said Zen, you know, there's something about being involved in making something with your hands and you lose track of time and it, as long as you've got a certain amount of um, ability and experience and you sort of you get to the point where you know what you're doing and it's not just a new thing that you're learning and you're going ah I can't do this once you've got beyond that and you're working for yourself 
it's just it's wonderful you can lose time you can all your troubles melt away i can come in here shut the door and and everything is okay right it's um so you work a lot on commission mm -hmm. you do i mean that's really what you do you do commissions mm -hmm. and so someone phones you and says what i have pages i want you to make a book with it <laughs> um so i generally the, the two areas of commission work that i work on I'll either do what's called a design binding. So that's my artistic interpretation of a text. So it'd be a pre-existing text. Someone will say, my favorite book is 2001 Space Odyssey or Dr. Zhivago, whatever it is. And, and I read the book, I you know, research around it. I go out and find ideas and come up with a design and show that to the client and when they're happy, when we've reached what we're all happy and what's happy with I then go away and buy the book and they, they then get a copy so it would be a, I would source probably a first edition of that book okay but not in good condition okay. so you're getting a really important or well-made or well-printed edition of that particular book but it's not in it, the best nick that it could be so I, so do you remove the original cover first yeah okay um, so I've got, so these are some books. This is The Subjection of Women, which um, by John Stuart Mill, which I'm making, doing for a collector of socialist books. So I take off the covers, I then take apart the whole book, I uh, mend the sections, re -sew them, and then I'm going to add M papers and covers and cover with leather um, to an agreed design. Um, and the design can be quite elaborate. I mean, you showed me a piece earlier that had um, an original. It was for um, a, a castle, you said? Yes, for a stately home. For and, a stately yeah, home. Yeah, yeah. And you had a piece I'll, of I'll the... Uh, that. Yeah, why don't we do that? We also had, uh, we had lunch here. Uh, I should tell you, which was wonderful because it was prepared by a local chef with local products. So that's what you maybe see in the background. But uh, yes, let's have a look at this. Uh, so this this was for an exhibition called Useful Beautiful, which happened last year at um, Harwood House. So they they chose a craftsperson, each from a different discipline. So there was a glass blower or a bookbinder or a furniture maker or a rug weaver. And each person made a piece for specifically for this exhibition. So I made this, which is a facsimile. Oh, I can't it. um, it's a facsimile of um, a sketchbook by Joseph Rose, who was a master plasterer. He worked with Robert Adam on all the or ornate ceilings in Britain's stately homes and in America. I think it's quite a few in the states as well. So I made this piece to go in the exhibition. So obviously this is a, a plaster work piece that I've gilded and then these are inset and tooled inlays. They're dyed and then inset and tooled. And then the box, who makes the box? I, make, you make, I make the box. You make the box yeah, too. Every book comes with its own solander box that's custom made for it. Do you sign, you sign your work? Yep. You do? Yep. yep. No, every, every book has, has my that one's on the back of it, but yes, yeah, yeah. so everything has has my stamp, my signature stamp. Would there be a book that you would refuse to? I don't know. I have a coin. <laughs> if it had some dubious content, I might take issue with it. I don't know, but I haven't yet been. And you do anything. read the book before. Yeah, yeah. you do I read the book. Because um, the other end of the spectrum is that I work with clients, so I've had someone bring me a collection of old letters that their great grandfather had written back to his parents, and they we then scanned all the letters, and we've done a whole research project around those letters and found photographs. So he visits Australia, so we found then photographs from the period and put them in, and, and also some text. So when I'm making a whole uh, short. Um, edition for him, ten copies of this one of this book, which will be exclusive to his family, in, uh, with you know marble paper that matches the whiskey that this man then went on to produce, and you know it's it's a, it's a really wonderful project. Mm. You become almost part of the family a little bit now. It's very intimate. <laughs> it's because yeah. you get to see very close and in depth, and, and even when you're working on a commission, 
I need to show you this book as well. Um, yeah, I'm working for a commission for a client who, um, so he, he had some sheets, the, the Cal Scott Chaucer by William Morris, you know, who um, William Morris mm -hmm. printed, he was a very, very famous designer, obviously we know this. And Do you want to be doing the it's quite heavy. I was talking about big books. I always get big books. I haven't quite. So this, so I was given, William Morris is obviously famous to everybody for his uh, fabric designs, his wallpaper designs. He was, you know, he basically- His love of craft. Love of, so he was a fan of the arts and crafts movement. And this actually is a, um, it's actually a facsimile, it's a very, very good facsimile, almost perfect reproduction of the original Kelmscott Chaucer. So this was, they're all individually hand cut uh, wood blocks that are then um, printed up. And these There's are- a lovely relief to it. Yeah. You can feel the ink. Uh, these are illustrations by Edward Byrne Jones, who's a very famous um, pre-Raphaelite painter uh, who worked with him together and he, so they describe this as being a little pocket cathedral because it's got so much inside it. And um, so that then I came up for the design for this um, is based on a stained glass window designed by William Morris of the Tree of Life. Um, and this is actually the second one I've done now. So I did one on a commission. But I, I what I was saying is that the client who I did it for his two main loves were one stained glass and one was trees so I go to his house I talk to him about what he, interests him and what you know so that we can incorporate his passions into the book as well so he's now got the first copy this is the second this is going to Bangkok so this is leather which you have cut out cut out mm -hmm. uh, to create the atelier and then this is Did a you paint the I images? painted these, yeah. You painted the images underneath. Mm -hmm. And then you get, um, so this, I'm waiting to put down. So this is fine art. This is not craft anymore. It's, I don't know where the line actually sits on that because I, I've, I've, I came up with this uh, uh, description artistan, so an artist and an artisan, which um, but you can see this has got the colored edges and uh, that, that's a, proper headband that's it. right um but yeah it will it will it is and it's fairly physical because this is a heavy book so when you need to turn it and lift it and uh and i'm not very big no you're not very <laughs> big that's right but yeah the whole thing will, it will sit like that did you it's create just, this yeah so i print print the end papers um yeah no, the, the, the point of a design binding is that the binder can we open more of the book and yeah, see more yeah. of the book? It, is, it looks absolutely extraordinary. So here you can see my sewing in here. Um, and the paper is, is regular paper? What, uh, it's a rag paper. Rag in, paper? Yeah. Where is it the, from? I think it's French. I can look it up. So they gave you all the sheets yep. loose yep. and then you put it together. Yeah. I'm trying to find this a really wonderful, I like this is my favorite one, with these, the Parliament of Frowls. But they're, and they're extraordinary. Um, they are, um, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is uh, create something uh, that reflects the text, but isn't just a, a parody of it. You know, I'm not right. trying to just, uh, oh, here's William Morris, you know, plonk. Um, I'm trying to make something that's contemporary that reflects what's his, what he was interested in and his work. And um, it's, uh, yeah, hopefully I've achieved that. And how did the client find you? How do people find you? Uh, so I think he came through a book dealer who I knew who recommended me. Um, it's all word of mouth. I don't have any, I do very little PR, <laughs> and, and right. very little, I don't do any advertising. It is all, it's, and I'm, I'm chock-a-block, you know. I'm, you, I'm, how long is your wait list for now? Up to a year. A year? Yeah, wow. at least. 
That's amazing. Sometimes little jobs can get squeezed in around the bigger jobs, but um, yeah. Right. And you teach at the same time. And I teach at the same time. So tonight I'm going down to West Dean, which is a very world-renowned centre for arts and crafts. And I teach bookbinding to the book conservation students there. Um, I also teach wounded, sick and injured servicemen and women. I teach it therapeutically. So I think so they may be suffering from PTSD or lost a limb or and they find it really joyful you know the, the, the whole demeanor changes throughout the week and they come in feeling really sad and down and leave you know happy with some you know I think it's the the self-esteem goes up you know your sense of um, yourself and, and, and what you can achieve is just so wonderful and um, yeah mm. And, and there is, I mean, the, the books have that connection. It's the hand, it's the eye, it's the mind. It's the, as you said, the, the mind goes very calm. And, mm. But all the senses are involved in that kind of craft. And uh, Absolutely. I yeah. Because I, I, not only am I using my hands to make the thing, I also have to read the book, do the, you know, the intellectual is, is stimulated, the creative side is stimulated, um, you know, the physical. So it, I, it covers, it ticks every base for me. <laughs> Incredible. Um, do we have any questions? No, no questions. Amazing. You are all transfixed here. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, what, um, where do you see book binding? going do you see a re renewed interest in it do you see more collectors do you what do you think um it's interesting here in the uk we now have no book binding courses available they have all closed you cannot go to college and study book binding anywhere you can go and learn it as part of a book arts course or part of a book conservation course but to learn something to this level it's not possible you can go and study with an individual artisan like myself, or you can pay for weekend courses or, but it's, I, I worry about the craft that not enough young people are coming up behind. I'm one of the younger ones and I'm not as young as I was. Um, there's also the thing about everyone says, oh, the Kindle is going to take over, you know, everything's going to go digital. And I think actually for me, it's it's a blessing in disguise because the more people who go down the digital route there'll be a fewer smaller number who really really appreciate the handmade and the you know hopefully have the disposable income to to pay for it as right. well right. but you know the book as an object as opposed to just something that you read you know that you use for mm -hmm. um your information yeah it will be a sort of a, a revered thing mm. now this is not conservation. No, I think that we should. So maybe you can explain to us a little bit what conservation entails and who does that. And uh, and I'm assuming you work some time with mm -hmm. conservationists. Yeah, I work. So everything that I put into my books is pH neutral and conservation grade. So all the board and glue and everything is. So everything I'm, it it should in you know many many years still function and it should also be reversible a conservationist will get something that is falling apart and they will preserve it as much as possible they don't want to change it in any way they want to ideally make a box to preserve that object as as it is rather than changing its um, structure in any way so uh, it's also very uh, chemistry minded conservation and um, it's really, really important to preserve everything. Obviously, there's then there's also restoration. So if you have um, books that are falling apart, a restorer will then put the book back together so that you can read the book. But that's not necessarily to conservation grade. Right. And a rebinding is what I do. I'm a I'm a book binder as opposed to a restorer right. or conservationist. But yes, I do work closely with conservationists so we got a couple of questions here um one is how big is your team me <laughs> just you <laughs> uh yeah sometimes i and when i have a, a big job i have a colleague down the road who i pull in who i get who helps me out 
I have been known to employ my children from time to time, <laughs> but uh, generally it's just me, yeah. Um, there was also a question, maybe, can you uh, take us through more in detail the steps of uh, binding the book? So you receive the uh, pages, you read the book, you create the design, but the physical steps, the, the boards, the sewing, a little bit what we've just done, I guess, but yeah. in a more artistic uh, way. Uh, let me see. Let's see if uh, I've got enough things here to illustrate. So every book is made up of single sections. So I'm just looking for the single section. Have you got yours, Isabel? Yeah. I'm looking for it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So every book is made up of, uh, of, of sections of paper, I think. Um, in the States, maybe in Canada as well, they're called signatures, but here in the UK we call them sections. And it starts off with a very large piece of paper from the printer that is then folded down. And that makes one section like this. When you want a multi-section book, so most books that we buy are multi-section. So they're, they're then joined to each other, stitched to each other to make what's called the book block. You then add your end papers, these are tipped on, but you can have sewn on. You can, I mean, there's a whole, I'm not going to go into the, you know. But it can be a very decorative. Uh, really decorative. Uh, as we and saw, things we saw here. I mean, this is. Uh, yeah, so that's the end paper. That's and then, the end paper, it's, which is incredibly decorative. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, sorry. I was just getting a little so yes, you have the end papers. These are just um, plain paper end papers, but yes, as you say, they can be completely decorative. If it's a fine binding, it will have an end paper here, and then this is what's called the doubleur. It's a separate piece, usually of leather, um, which I will put down onto this. That's my job tomorrow, to not to next week. It then gets rounded and backed. So you see, so this, curve you see here this is actually manipulated into position with uh with your hands and then uh it's hammered over to create this uh what's called the shoulder um the boards of the book then sit in the shoulder like that because that then um means the functioning of the book is is better functioning um it also What's interesting here is you've eagle-eyed people may have spotted that this edge should actually be curved as well. But I've been practicing this for edge decoration demonstrations. So that's why I've cut off that edge. But it, it, will, it will look once it's been, what's the seam? Like that. It will look like this. So curved at the edge. Right. Um, then color the edges. And then um, do the headbanding. So this is a decorative hand-sewn silk headband. It sits up here. And then these boards get attached to the book block using um, what's called um, aero linen to make a hinge. These boards then, the, these are the boards that get chamfered. So they've got a nice, um, you know, smooth line and then they get covered in leather. So this is this was a demonstration book. I don't think only covered half of the leather, but you can see how the leather's been gone over here and in here, and then you'd cover the whole thing leather, and then you'd put in your doublers, and you'd have your end paper there, or here you'd. So it's a lot of steps. It's for a, a fine binding, I say it's approximately 150 hours of binding for one book. Right. Do you have a sewing machine to stitch these sections together? Got my hands. Your hands. <laughs> <laughs> and um, can you show us some of your tools? Yeah. Uh, so the basic tools of the book binder are the bone folder, which is one of man's earliest tools. I love that continuity. You know, you can imagine cavemen with their bits of bone using them as a tool what kind of bone is it a cow cow generally cow 
Um, and you use that to, I use that for uh, folding, smoothing, creasing, uh, rubbing down, gluing, so much. Right. Uh, it's, it's very, very integral part. It's the extension of the hand. Exactly. So I have the bone folder. I also have what's called a Teflon folder, made of Teflon. This is a sort of new version of the traditional bone folder, which is just, it's just that much smoother and easier to keep clean, basically. Um, then we have dividers, which are used for measuring, um, making sure that measurements are equal all the way around and for spacing things out evenly. Um, cobbler's knife for slitting leather. Um, you use glue? What kind of glue do you use? I use uh, PVA, reversible PVA, or um, a paste. It's a starch powder paste. They're, they're all fully reversible. So if in the future anyone wants to take the book apart, it means the text block is still um, absolutely, uh, you know, it, it's not permanently changed. You can always reverse it back to its former state. Right. Um, there's lots of other, I mean, there's, there's presses. Yes, why don't we have a look at this beautiful press here? Down here, there's some interesting things. So this is um, what's called a nipping press, which we use to um, tighten up and you put your book in here between its boards and you, you use this just to get some good pressure on it to make sure everything's nicely stuck and um, and just keeping everything flat and that is, is, that's very very important keeping everything flat and as it dries not bowing uh, out. Right and we have a lot of weights I noticed. Yep. <laughs> All sorts of different weights. This is one I suspect. Yep. I, so I collect, also I collect um, glass paperweights. These are old irons, um, anything with a bit of heft to it mm -hmm. to, to keep some weight on top of the boards. Right. And of course you are standing when you work. All day long. All day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, so light is important. This is quiet. I love, this is purpose built for me. It was an old cow shed. There were the old cow stalls all the way down here and yes I put in this window and yeah light is. Right and in terms of the paper that you use to do the decorative paper and all that you work with specific artists. You have your favorite artists who do the marbling. Who yep. do, you so know? I have a specific um, Gemma Lewis who's based close to here. She um, marbles paper for me and we, we, we will do um, custom made marble paper for each particular book so it will match in with whatever you know other leather right. and whatever we're using. So there's there's the relationship with your with the other um, artists yeah. who will also interpret your vision mm -hmm. in these things. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a it's, it's a it's yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really uh, it's really incredible. Uh, any, any more questions? Because we had lots of questions just now. No? No more questions. I think is that, that enough? That, is that, is well, that do, you have, the, do you have more that you want to share with us? Uh, no, I think, I think you've had a, a, good, a good brief overview. <laughs> if, if anyone wants to learn, would it be, does people want to see the books that they will learn in the um, Yes, course? that would be great. Would so be we're going to have four uh, courses on book binding with uh, Kate. They're going to take place in December and January. I'm just about to publish them on the website. And uh, it will be a progression of uh, skills. I should tell you that um, with the uh, course, we are going to be sending you your tools because it's quite difficult to find the tools. So you will receive a pouch like that, leather pouch, which will be um, uh, monogrammed. And this one is missing a couple of tools, but you will receive all the tools in there. It's a beautiful custom made uh, leather uh, pouch for your tools. And um, it will be, you know, one purchase and you will use it for all the, uh, all the four courses and afterwards. I mean, these are tools that you can, you can use for many, many things. So let's have a look at what we're gonna learn.
So the, the, the book that we've done today with Isabel is, is what's called a single section pamphlet binding and that basically shows you all the basic, um, most basic techniques used in Western book binding. Um, we're also going to look at uh, Japanese binding. So there's a little, so I think one of the uh, courses you, is, is how to make these. And this is also a really uh, lovely decorative way of binding together single sheets of paper, because quite often you don't have paper that's nicely folded to sew through. So we're going to do that in one course. And then in the following one, we're going to make this. And I can see that, that we can uh, um, make lovely messages. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can write a whole, your own little book to give for a birthday Christmas or present, Christmas, Christmas coming present. up. And you can, you can write in it and it's so pretty. So, so pretty. So then we'll make the, this portfolio to go with the, these Japanese oh, books. But this also is giving you the basics on, on how to make a portfolio, which is a really useful thing to make, to just keep loose photographs or letters or whatever you want to keep in it. So that's courses two and three, I believe. And then this is what's called a long stitch leather journal. So it's, um, this is a very uh, old uh, way of joining pages to a cover. So each of these sections is sewn directly onto the skin and then you have a nice wrap around with a thong to tie it together. Oh fabulous. Wonderful. And I'll provide all the materials yes. ready cut and they will come as a yeah. package before yeah. each course. Right so uh, ah there's a question currently let me see are the pages trimmed after binding to ensure they line up? Yes. Okay and if we take the course do we source our own paper? No, I will provide all the paper yes. in, a, in a kit that will come prior to each course. Yeah, so um, for those of you who have not taken our workshops, we do send all the equipment to you. The only thing that we might not send uh, would be glue, but it's always very easy a glue to, uh, to source, or it might be a simple ruler because it's very easy for you to source and there's no need to charge you for that but any specific material uh, that you need, you will receive it. We've just done it with uh, hand and lock for the embroidery course and we send everything. It arrives to you way in advance of the course. So you have time to familiarize yourself with the tools and uh, then you're completely ready on the, uh, on the day of the uh, workshop and you can concentrate on the skills. So uh, worry not, we will send you everything unless you have some particular paper that you would like to use. Um, or maybe I'll show you the first one, how to do it using my pre-cut, and then you'll know how to right. use it with your own paper afterwards. But, um, but everything, everything is sent to you in advance. Good. Well, I think that um, we're gonna be selling out this workshop after you've seen today. I can tell you that I really wanted to try the workshop myself first before um, uh, putting it on the website because I've never done that and I wanted to get a sense and it's enormously satisfying. Um, it's very zen. Shamini who's here and Matt and Jane, we've just done the course together. Um, everybody make the same comment how wonderful it is and, uh, and satisfying. So I hope you'll join us. Um, is there one more question? No. We are good. Just warning, it might be addictive. It might be addictive. Well, that's okay. <laughs> it's going to be a long winter, so <laughs> we'll, we can spend time doing that. Thank you so much no, for pleasure. welcoming Thank us. You. Uh, I always say that uh, um, makers and artist studios are their home, and I'm always extremely appreciative that you're welcoming us in your home. Uh, wonderful.